I want to introduce to you today an alumni from 72, Dave Holly, from uh, Wichita Collegiate School in Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. He's a history professor there and tennis coach, uh, and they've had a very successful tennis team through the years under his leadership. Uh, if the year 72 sounds familiar, that's one year after President Ekman, and I understand he has several stories on President Ekman, and also on Tim Lewis from his days in Wichita, so yeah, he told me a few, so they're pretty good. So uh, without further ado, Dave Holly, alumni from the class of 1972. Is Tim here? Hello there. <laughs> uh, this is really odd. I, I went to school here two years when it was a two-year school. Um, I, I don't think I was ever in front of anybody in chapel. Uh, that would take time unless we were singing. The chorus was singing. Um, so this is kind of a, a new thing for me to be up here in front. And um, I, do, I do believe that probably some of my old teachers or professors, if they knew this was taking place today, uh, might be rolling over in uh, whatever graves they are in at this particular time. So, uh, and I appreciate you looking at me. I, I like that. And when I was in chapel back in the day, back in New York, and, and later uh, when we went to Harding, the distraction from, from here to there was not telephones, but it was newspapers. And uh, if you were scheduled to talk or, or say something on the day the newspaper came out, it was like being at a KU game when they were introducing the opposing team and Everybody's got their paper up, and they throw it up in the air, and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, uh, this is where I, said, I wrote down, I said, good morning. Uh, good morning. I'm, I'm, honored, I'm honored to be here uh, as part of this particular 125th uh, anniversary celebration. I have to warn you, when Nick contacted me to talk, I, I immediately start thinking of things I want to say, and my first draft was two hours long. Uh, you don't have to worry. It's, it's much lower than that. Or maybe you want that if you've got a class coming up and you really didn't want. And the first hour and a half of it was simply apologies uh, to people that are here now or people who have gone on or to the school itself or mistakes that I made here or fines that I might still owe or if you've come across my initials scratched in a desk somewhere. Uh, that was what I was going to do the first part of that, but I decided I kind of want to move on. I read a quote. Uh, from George Bernard Shaw that said, youth is wasted on the young. And sometimes I, I would think that would describe my time at York, um, that I really didn't appreciate what was going on while I was here. Now that I look back, I appreciate it a lot. I've been out of the state for 38 years. I've been out of New York for 41 years. I've lived in, in Wichita for 38 years, and I still introduce myself there as a visitor to Kansas. Uh, I'm in Nebraska. I, I, I see some of you wearing, sporting the big red stuff, and when I'm at home, that's where I wear most of the time if I'm not wearing my, my collegiate stuff. And I, and I embarrass my wife invariably because I, every time I see a Nebraska license plate, uh, in, in Kansas, I'll honk and wave, and if I have my Husker hat, I'll hold it up and hope they're not Creighton fans or, or <laughs> something of that nature. But this morning when I was driving in, it took me five miles inside the state to stop doing that because I'm honking and everybody has a Nebraska plate, and I realized these are Nebraska people. They're going to have Nebraska plates. They're probably thinking I'm odd, you know, waving at 6.30 in the morning. Okay, in the imitation of, of the Apostle Paul, I bring greetings from past work college people who attended East Point Church of Christ, including, uh, and, and if you're a student now, this, these names may not mean anything to you, but if you're older, they may. Richard and Rachel James, Ken and Sarah Van Gompel, who, by the way, I think their parents just sold the kitchen. Saw an article on that paper. I've eaten there once. I, I did like it. Uh, Annie Johnson, Todd and Christy Pryor Truett, Shannon Lacey Vaughn, Scott and Karen Holly, that's my brother, Sharina Sykes Langley, uh, Travis and Carrie Sears, and several more. They wish you Godspeed. Uh, those of you that, that want to take the time to say hello to me afterwards, if you were here, and at a time when, when we knew each other, when we both looked differently, and I don't remember your name, if you'll just tell me and we'll cut to the chase that way, that would be good. Tim, I remember. Um, that would be good. A little, bit of a, a little bit of how I came to be here. Our family moved to Nebraska in 1959 from Brooklyn, New York. That's the ultimate culture shock. I remember when we moved into our first house here. Uh, I said, Dad, what's this green stuff? Uh, around our house, he said, son, they call that a lawn. Uh, yeah, I thought it was funny on the way up here. But, uh, 
and there was a, it really was totally different moving from a city of six million at the time to a town of six thousand, and yet it was it was probably the greatest thing that my parents ever did for me. Uh, we had no official connection to the college for the first ten years I lived here, and yet. There was no separating in one respect, the college and the church. They were both here as a mission at the same time. Immediately came under the influence of, of people who I would consider giants of God. Uh, the Campbells, the Larsons, the Millers, the Napiers, the Tandys, the Vetitos, the Humphreys, and many, many more. Uh, I spent many, many hours on campus uh, as a kid, probably being an annoying pest, long before I came here. I think I had a crush on half of the girls who went to college here at one point in time and probably were really annoying pest in, that in those particular days. I think it was always a given I was going to go to York College. Uh, I had, didn't really have any other options. That was what we were taught in our home, but it became uh, official when uh, Coach Bob Thomas, who was 6'7 at the time, I think he still is, uh, made it official when he gave me a basketball scholarship after my senior year at York High. I know you look at this old body. Um, and say, you know, you're 62 years old, there's no way you could have ever hooped. Uh, but Tim will tell you, I could hoop back in the day. Um, I haven't hooped for many, many years, but that's, that's just because life goes on. Thus, I came to York and it became really what was started somewhat of a bumpy uh, journey into adulthood. And in thinking of all the lessons that I learned here and impacts that I got here, I came up with a quirky little list, uh, but to me, significant list, of memories and influences. I learned that York College was a place where there were really smart, godly people who were not into this life for the amount of money they could make or the amount of fame that they could attain, but instead for the impact that they could make on young lives. I would call that living a life of sacrifice, but I'm pretty sure that never crossed any of their minds that that's what they were doing. That was just the way life was. I learned that York College was a place where a high quality education was possible and in every class, you were challenged to be stretched to, to new academic levels. I also learned that a 1.62 GPA in my first semester was not something that my family really thought that would be all that impressive. <laughs> yeah. Um, I learned that York was a place that, has, that high, had high standards of moral and spiritual behavior that were not to be compromised. But when they were, and resolution had taken place, then forgiveness and acceptance were just as normal part of the existence here, and there was a strong desire to mentor, encourage, and comfort. I learned that if your class didn't have a Sykes in it, it was a really odd year. Um, I don't know if that's still the, uh, the case today, but it seemed like their, half our school population was made up of Sykes. I remember that Dr. Miller uh, was an avid Nebraska fan, and one time uh, he figured out the, the process of putting a transistor. Do you, got, do you even know what a transistor radio is? Okay, but back in the day when transistor radios were there, you could stick them in your pocket, a little earphone would go in your ears, and he would listen, listen to Husker games during, like, um, homecoming weekend, and one time there, the chorus was singing, and uh, Nebraska scored at a pretty critical moment, and he, would, he kind of let himself go for a minute, and he goes, yes! It's like that in the middle of a pretty spiritual song, and they kind of looked around sheepishly, and everybody knew the music was up there. I learned that it was uncomfortable when your dad used your records to play in chapel to point out a level of moral decay going across America at the time. <laughs> and those were my Jackson 5 records. Uh, I hadn't even really gotten into the other stuff. I learned that you had a professor who you'd known all your life and he called you Doug on the first day of school and your name was Dave. You could be in for a really long semester. I learned that in those days, if you snuck out of the dorms and were caught, there was a $5, $5 fine for going out, but another $5 fine for coming in late. And so many of my friends just decided if they were going out, they just weren't coming back in. I know you make better judgment uh, decisions than that today. I learned that being a resident assistant with a key had great perks, including being able to steal other clubs' jerseys from their room under the guise of room check and then see how long it took them to figure out. I actually, there was a physical fight that took place with that. I wasn't involved, but I didn't witness it. I remember, I remember one time driving home from a basketball game in Kansas during a snowstorm in the bus that we had in those days where all the windows of the bus were open because there was a gas leak inside. There was snow coming in the windows, but we were bound and determined to make it home that night. 
Uh, it wasn't the fondest of memories, uh, but it did prove to me that three or four people huddled together uh, can kind of create some body warmth. Um, in my years of coaching tennis, I've created, I counted one time, over 300 different shirts uh, for my team, t-shirts for my teams, or for tournaments or whatever. But the very first shirt I ever was involved in making was in 1971, where we created a shirt that said on the left side up here, Hewlett's Last. Hewlett's Last. They were going to condemn the building. Now, that was in 1971. It had, a picture, it had a picture of a rat on it because there were rats, we thought, in the building. And I, I drove by there this morning to see if it was done, and it looks like it's still in operation. 44 years later. <laughs> Might be time to put out a new t-shirt. <laughs> I learned that sometimes great things come about because of what looked like setbacks at the time. At the end of my freshman year, our gym, which is now where the Mackey Center is, became damaged beyond repair by a storm that was nearly tornadic. It wasn't quite tornado level, it was like straight line winds. And so it was unusable. But out of that came the Freeman Center, which was, I can't even tell you the massive upgrade that it was. I never got to play in it, except in alumni games. And I came back and I thought, this is not fair. We played in a cramped little gym that was sweaty and snow came in and whatever and they were playing and what I think it was still a very nice place to play. My last memory from the old gym was a dunk. Uh, we had a kid on our team who was 6'8", uh, later played at OC, scored 43 points against University of New Mexico one time named Reed Johnson and Reed threw down a dunk at the end of practice one time that was so massive and vicious that it broke the backboard. It totally tore it down. He was 6'8", our coach as I mentioned before, 6'7". Reed had a fairly extensive afro. And a lot, of the, a lot of the glass went into his hair. And so our coach was spent about the next half hour picking out showings of glass. We were all laughing. We thought it was actually a pretty good uh, scene right there. I remember chorus trips were a great chance to see the country and to meet Christians from new places, as well as know every song so well that if we had a chorus performance today, I could sing it all and not miss a beat with any of the songs that I can't sing. Um, What's the song, Lord, are we coming for you now? That they, you guys still enter on that if you're in the chorus? Okay, that should be brought back. I'm just going to say it. As well as tennis, by the way. I'm, I'm giving $5 today to bring back the tennis program. Here because while I was here, it was by far the best thing at the school. Uh, I do have one chorus trip story. And I, I, I know you guys have other things to do. But I want to tell this one. Because it's one of my moments where I really had a, you know, you hear the phrase, come to Jesus moment. And I needed a lot of them as I was growing up. We were on one of our chorus trips my sophomore year. We were on an East Coast trip. And the boys, the, the girls were staying in, in homes. The boys stayed in the church building. And uh, so we always slept in pews, uh, which is not the most comfortable thing in the world. Well, one of our classmates, a guy named Mike Westerfield, was taught here. And uh, I got a letter from him yesterday about the 125th uh, anniversary thing. Set his alarm for 3 in the morning. He, he, he cased out the building, set his alarm, and at 3 in the morning, the building is pitch black. He turned the loudspeaker on, and he, and he yelled into the loudspeaker, This is the day of judgment, <laughs> like that. I have never been more afraid in my life. <laughs> I, remember, I remember saying at that time, it really was a moment where I could sit there and say, I'm glad it's not, because I'm not ready. I'm on this chorus trip, but I'm not ready. And it really had a moment of, of change in my life. I, I don't suggest you do that anytime soon, but it, it worked for me. I remember that York was a place where you could be involved in as many things as you cared to be. My short list was chorus, newspaper, tennis, basketball, stuco, even though I'm not really sure why I was ever voted onto it. I, at one time, one of my friends ran for stuco president, and his, his speech was, you should vote for me because I plan to do nothing. Uh, as president, therefore getting all of you involved, he lost in the landslide. Um, but he's a successful guy today, so maybe he figured something out along the way. I was involved in devotionals, work study. You guys still go around with a little stick picking up trash. Anybody do that? That was a great job. 15 hours a week, unsupervised. I made pretty good money at that. Uh, much of it was trash that I had thrown the night before to kind of make sure I had something to pick up. Uh, when I went to Hardy, I, I had the advantage that I never would have had if I'd gone there before of knowing what I wanted to do and what I didn't want to do. And, and I, would, I would say if you're a freshman or sophomore, if you get the opportunity to 
to try different stuff out and say, maybe I want to do that. Maybe, you know, I know you have a great baseball team now, and I, and I follow your basketball. I saw your team play two years ago at OC. And, uh, you know, I, if you might think, oh, I want to try something different. I want to do something different. This is a good place to do that. Uh, and I would imagine that you might find something new in your life that is good. I remember this was a place where lifelong friendships were made that still exist today. Some of my classmates got together this fall on the East Coast. It was an impromptu trip. Fifteen of them got together for a long weekend. I would have loved to have gone, but it was during our state tennis tournament, which, by the way, is also when our homecoming is every year, which is why I would love to come to homecoming if we just move it. So I'm putting, that's the second thing I'm putting forth today, move it two weeks back, and I'll never miss it. Uh, these, these friendships you make, right now you may think, they're not going to be that big a deal, but they will. They, they really resonate in your life. I believe that York gave me my second best gift uh, beyond my salvation, in, in that I met my wife here. Uh, she's two years behind me. We were never in school together here, uh, but I lived here and I came back and she was walking across campus and I had already tired of Harding girls. I'm not going to tell the full story of this because I'll get in trouble because I think it's on film. And, and, but it, the bottom line was, she was the most beautiful vision I'd ever seen in my life. And she was a Kansas girl and she was wearing jeans, and no girls at Harding at that time wore jeans. It was like every small date was a trip to the, well, we don't have problem, but a trip to a, a pretty big uh, affair or whatever. And so the bottom line was, I saw her, I immediately fell in love, and I courted her from a distance and blah, blah, blah. Um, <laughs> she's, she's the biggest the biggest positive part of my life, and, and I, uh, I thank God that she came here for two years. Uh, even though none of my three kids attended YC, uh, the impact of York is in them in a variety of experiences. Zach and, and Megan, my oldest two, both attended Soul Quest when it was here in its earliest form, and both were baptized here. And I, and I, again, at the risk of running over time, I had told my children early on, look, when you're baptized, I want to be the one baptizing you. That's my right. Uh, I kind of brought you into this world. Well, so the first, the first time we were down, in fact, I'll tell you what night it was. You're not old enough to remember, but there was a night where O.J. Simpson was in a, a white Bronco uh, getting away from the police. Well, at, on that very same night, we were in Branson on a family vacation. And Zach called me. He goes, Dad, guess what? I go, what? He goes, I was baptized tonight. And I go, no! I mean, I, I mean, it sounds really like a bad reaction. Uh, and I said, that's my job. And I believe Tim baptized him, if I'm not mistaken. So I kind of held that against Tim ever since then. But, I, but really, that was a great moment because he, he was at Soul Quest. And then I didn't think I needed to tell my daughter the same thing because she had seen my reaction, but the very same thing happened the next year. Uh, Megan called and said, I've been baptized up here. And I, I, I quit giving up. I didn't let my third son, Ben, go to Soul Quest. Because <laughs> uh, I was bound to determine I was going to baptize one of my children. Anyway, uh, Zach almost came here to play basketball. Uh, he ended up going to OC to play. Uh, it, it worked out great. I mean, his family's down there, but I would have loved him playing here as well. That would have been great. And Megan has often said that York would have been the absolute perfect fit for her to come to. And I see that in, in uh, many of you. I was reminded that I was blessed by having two godly parents, as some of you know, who gave me the gift of living here. Uh, where I can be the beneficiary of this place. But the, the greatest impact to me of York College is the reminder that York has stood as a beacon of spiritual light in a part of a country where it's not always seemed easy to do. Many of you here come from small congregations that were ministered to by York grads who are willing to stay in this part of the country to work in God in God's kingdom. That's a blessing that they have given you. Now, I thank you so much for the chance to let me get up here and, and just kind of speak for a little bit right here. But I hope you realize more than anything else what a great blessing it is to be here. I, this is one of the, the places that I can look back in my life and say, had I not been here growing up and had I not been here as a student, some of the things that I hold most near and dear uh, to me never would have taken place. And hopefully the growth that I've, any growth that I've had would be in, in, in large part because of the year. As a class member of the class of 1972, I ask God's richest blessings on you, and I hope you have a great rest of the day and a great rest of the semester. Thanks.